Proverbs 13 and 1, 13 and 1 to 5, amen. Let every soul be subject to the higher power. Somebody say, that includes me. For there is no power but of God. The powers that are be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power resists the ordinances of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For the rulers are not a terror to good works. Listen, if you ain't hiding things and doing things wrong, you ain't got nothing to fear about a preacher or a pastor or the ministry. Boy, it got quite thin. Amen. The rulers are not a terror to good works, but of evil. Will thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God to revenge and to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Evil. Then it says, wherefore, ye must need to be subject, not only for wrath, but also conscience sake. Let me tell you something. A cop, police officer, all the, men, uh, all the police officers in Madisonville, they get paid because if you live in Madisonville, city limits, they get paid because of your, your taxes, okay? And they're here to what? Serve you. You should never fear one time. And we give up, and sometimes we think, oh, that pig. That's the wrong thing. You know how many times I've went to a restaurant and seen cops and state troopers sitting in there eating, and I'd go and say, hey, give me their, their, their ticket. I want to buy it. They're protecting me. When I call them, I hope they show up. That's the same thing as a preacher. A preacher is not our enemy. Our brothers and sisters shouldn't be our enemy. It should help us, praise God, and improve us to be better. Amen? I promise you. Uh, I will say, Brother uh, Henry Travis is probably one of the, the best and the fastest brick, or no, not brick. He hates brick. Block layers that there is. I've worked with him. He's a good block layer. I mean, he just throws them in there. Amen? He, he's a block laying pool. Amen? He is a good block layer. But I tell you, he's done it enough that I know, praise God, that if you just start and he's trying to help you, he's going to show you some mistakes that you make so you can be just as good. The generation, praise God, today that's coming up living for God, amen, the Bible said the elders teach the younger. And the problem, praise God, with this generation, amen, you can't tell them nothing. They know it all, praise God, amen. And then when you try to say something in, in, in the right way, then they get mad at you. I'm going to tell you something. When somebody's really trying to correct you, if you didn't do nothing wrong, keep a good spirit. Don't worry about it. If you get, if you get mad about it, it just proves, praise God, that you was wrong. Oh, good Lord, that hurts. Man, it's all it's got truth. Amen. So you understand, praise the Lord, Brother Joy Sellers has done heat and air, I don't know how many years. Yes, some do, they don't do it the same way and stuff, but there's still, they, there, there's even guidelines they got to go by. There's even, uh, 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 um, if you want to say a permit, they got to buy, and then they got to go by a, uh, a way to be able to build it, praise God, for it to, for it to pass. Can I tell you something? Here's the, here's the blueprint for our life. The word of God. That's right. And I'm going to say this. I mean this with all my heart. And if I offend you, praise God, I'm sorry. Amen. Every one of us in here have to go to heaven the same way, praise God, I do. You got to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Right. You got to go down in the watery grave, praise God, amen, and be baptized in Jesus' name only. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and with the evidence of speaking in tongues that the Spirit gives the utterance. That's the plan of salvation. Hallelujah. And if you do it any other way, praise God, hallelujah, you climbed up any way, the Bible said you're the same as a thief and a robber. 
Then you've got to go on, praise God, into perfection. Amen. Not laying again the foundation of dead works and repentance, praise God. And live a holy life. Let be sanctified, praise God, through his word. Amen. We don't expect, praise God, babies, praise the Lord, amen, just to come in here, amen, just to change right overnight. Amen. Now, most of them, praise God, if they really do, if you get the real genuine Holy Ghost, I will say you will. Oh, boy, I almost said something. I'll hold that for later. Amen. But I will tell you, amen, there will, will be a change about you. But then you need to learn, praise God, to pattern your life after something. Now, listen, don't pattern your life out of somebody that's wishy-washy, that's in the day and out tomorrow. Don't get calamity, praise God, for somebody in your life when you're struggling, praise God, uh, with porn sites. Uh, amen. And go to somebody, praise God, that they're struggling with porn sites. Go to somebody, praise God, that's overcome it, hallelujah, and got victory over it. If we don't get this together, praise God, I promise you, you're not going to see the signs, wonders, and miracles. A church that ain't working and functioning, praise God, amen, and operating in one spirit. The Bible says, until we all come to unity of faith, the statue of fullness of Christ, that we be no more children tossed, every wind of doctrine, amen, praise God. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care what your grandma believes. I don't care what your grandpa believes. I don't care what your mom and daddy believes, amen. If it's not lined up to the word of God, they're, lo- they're wrong and the word is right. Amen. Accountability is right. I believe in it. I've got accountability in my life with my wife. I've got accountability with my pastor. I've got accountability, praise the Lord, uh, Brother Brad Giffen. I talk to him some. I talk to my brother some. Amen. It don't hurt to have people, praise God, that you've got confidence in, that you can talk to them, amen, and be able to draw some strength from them and learn from them. Come on. That's like somebody, praise God, been married 10 times. And a person, praise God, going through a finance, I mean, going through a, a marriage problem right now, getting ready to have a divorce, and you go to that person that's been married 10 times and ask him, hey, can, how can you help my marriage? That ain't going to work. Man. Hello? Everybody raise your hand and be real with me just for a minute before I hand hand it to the pastor. Raise your hand and really be real. We're not embarrassing, but we're just trying to say, if you got a problem of being accountable. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen. Anytime you talk about accountability, <clears throat> it's about unity and, and, and it's about love. Right. And the Bible says, let brotherly love continue. Um, you really can't have true love if you don't have a relationship with God like you need to have. Right. And really, people who struggle with accountability struggle with intimacy. And uh, physically and spiritually, um, you can talk to you can talk to marriage counselors. I promise you, they all day long they can they can ask you. You know, do you have a relationship with God? Okay, well, you probably don't have much relationship with your wife or your husband either, because it's about love. It's about breaking down those walls. Pastor talked about it being able to go and expose yourself to God. And then God being able to expose himself to you. Amen. And pastors being the watchman over your soul, 
we see things coming that you don't see. And some are so easily offended because they, for one, you're selfish. People have a problem with submission, have a problem with love, have a problem with intimacy, have a problem with accountability. It's selfishness. Everything's always about you. Your feelings are always hurt. And people come into the church, and you're not just holding yourself hostage, but you're, you're coming into the, to the house of God, and everybody can see your, your offense, and you're holding the whole service hostage because we are a body. And if that whole body is not working together, it's not going to function properly. If the praise team doesn't get up here and have their minds ready, it's going to hinder the congregation. No, y'all shouldn't be watching us. We're not your entertainers. We're not a concert. All right? But at the same time, we should have our minds on God, be prepared, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I'm, what we did tonight was awesome. You could feel a difference in the presence of God. Anytime a corporate body gets together in unity and praise like that, it makes a difference. But we're supposed to have our minds ready, Brother Heath, when we walk in the door. But if, just, if you have 99% of the congregation who's been praying, who's been ready, but then you have the 1% walk in that's been offended at somebody, they got their feelings hurt, well, this person did this, they said this about me, well, they preached on me, this, that, or, or the other. You're, you're holding the whole congregation captive. Because you're wearing your feelings on your shoulder because it's about you. And when we come to the house of God, that's the last thing it's, about to be, it's supposed to be about is us. It's supposed to be about God. We're not here for our glory. We're here for God's glory. Right. We, we're here to lift his name up, to bring, bring glory to him. He's jealous. If I'm up here singing and I'm just trying to sound good so somebody can come up to me after service and say, Man, Pastor, you just... You just knocked it out of the park. Amen. That's pride. And pride goeth before a fall. And you always know the ones who, when, when you come to the pastor, come to the minister, come to whoever it is, and you have to ask, are you preaching to me? Or are you talking about me? Or I might not have been hitting the nail on, on the head. Or the hammer on the head of that nail, but there was something getting stirred up because there's something inside of there. <laughs> Amen. There's something inside of there that's, uh, what's, what, what am I looking for? It's, it's, that's festering. Amen. Exactly. It's being brought to the surface. The issue's not the issue. How can, how can two walk together unless they agree? Yeah. Amen. The Bible talks about um, being unequally yoked. That's not just talking about marriage. Yeah, you're not supposed to go marry somebody that's way off on, in left field spiritually than you are. Or they believe a completely different thing than you believe. No, you're not supposed to do that. But you're also not supposed to take part with them that are not on the same page with you. Because we're supposed to be um, iron sharpens iron. We're supposed to be strengthening each other. And if you're around somebody that's weaker than yourself constantly, eventually that weakness is going to rub off on you. Not to say that we're not supposed to be examples and help others with our strength. Amen. Lift up the hands that hang down. But do it in a way that we're also strengthening, our, strengthening ourselves. Draw close to God. Amen. Have a relationship with him through prayer, fasting, the word. And then you'll be strong enough when the pastor stomps on your toes, you won't go crying and the whole congregation can see you. And I love it. You know, they have to come to you and, and pat you on the back and say, what's wrong? Oh, it's, is it okay? And it's, you know, bird, you said it, pastor. Birds of a feather flock together. Amen. But we need to be strong enough to say, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, for preaching to me. Thank you for uh, exposing that. Thank you. Amen. 
This ain't question and answer, Brother Henry. This is Bible study. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, I want to share a few things with y'all real quick about accountability. Accountability saved our marriage. And uh, that's why it's so important to me. When I, when I say I'm accountable, it means I'm actually really accountable. People have gotten angry at me and the praise team because I will say um, you haven't put on there that you've prayed today. Um, and it's not, I'm not trying to play God, but I know that when there's accountability, there's strength. That's whenever I know you're praying, I said I'm praying, I'm praying, you know I'm praying for you, that's strength, there's strength in that, knowing that your brother and your sisters right. are praying for each other. Right. So, um, because here, here's the deal, this saying says, where well, there is no accountability, there will be no responsibility. So when, when you go about life and you're so selfish and you're doing whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it, and you don't think about how your actions affect others, because you are your brother's keeper, you're responsible for your actions, okay? Now, when other people hurt you and all this kind of stuff, I've had a, bu a bunch of people say, well, so-and-so hurt me, and I'm just hurt, so I'm mad, and I'm not going to come back to church, or I'm mad, and I'm going to come in and act a certain way, or I'm going to do this. But here's the deal. God's not, you're not going to get a judge, judgment day, and, and God's going to say, you can come in because your spouse was mean to you. You can come in because... You were molested. You can come in even though you didn't, you weren't faithful to me because you were beat because of this, this, this. No, because it's up to you. You're accountable for your own actions. Proverbs 18, 14 says, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. The spirit of a man. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? Right. Who can bear a wounded spirit? Who can bear a wounded spirit? You get a wounded spirit, you can't, you can't carry it. No, you cannot carry it. And there's so much, this pastoral team, I promise you, this, and it says support without accountability can lead to enablement. If, if I don't hold the praise team accountable to being godly, I'm the leader, then that means I'm enabled them to come up here and pretend and put on a show and let y'all think they're being godly when they're bringing everything ungodly on this platform. That's my responsibility as a leader to do that. So I can't enable you. God has placed that in my life. I have to say, have you been praying? And you can, you can ask them and during praise team practice. I'm like, if you're watching this, anything with cussing, you're not up here. If you're listening to music that's not godly, you're not up here. If you don't pray, you're not up here. Everything we do, we must be accountable for. And, 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 and it's the same thing in the body of Christ. Um, First Samuel, is that where you want me to start? First Samuel um, 14 and 6 says, And Jonathan said to the young man to bear his armor, Come and let us go over into the garrison of these uncircumcised. And it may, it, it may be that the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to the heart. He was, gonna, he was right by his side. He was close-knit with him. He would go with him no matter. Whatever you say, I'm going to do it. Um, I have an issue with ministry that claims to be ministry, but they don't have anybody that they're accountable to. Because the thought that a pastor doesn't have to have a pastor is an oxymoron. How can you preach to me that I have to have a pastor, but you don't have to have a pastor? Right. It makes no sense. So, and it goes that way for anybody in the, in the body of Christ. When you come into the body of Christ, what you're doing is you're humbling yourself when you receive, when you repent, what are you doing? You're dying out. That's, that's a sign of humility. You're dying out to your sins. You turn about face and you walk the what? You're, you're being led by the what? By the word then. And then you're, you die. You're being buried into baptism by his name. That's another sign of saying, I, I surrender God. When you receive the Holy Ghost, what you do is you, you're, you allow yourself to be completely taken over by that spirit of God. So then he can lead you another form of humility and submission. Henceforth worship, what, we talk, what I talked about. Matthew 18, 18 says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Matthew 18, 19 says, And again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth... As touching anything 
that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. 1820 says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name. Notice how it says in my name. In whose name? In Jesus' name because that's where our authority lies. So, therefore, we have to take on his name in baptism to even have the authority. All right? We become a part of that body. Uh, for two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Uh, accountability means the fact or condition of being accountable, responsible. Uh, and it also goes on to say their lack, people's lack of accountability has corroded public respect. You want to know why? Listen, my great-great-grandmothers, all right, Mamie, everybody, any, some people may know her, Pauline Norton, and then there was the other one was Blondie Frazier. They were very good women. Their husbands were not great. Um, all throughout their marriage, they weren't faithful to God. They weren't faithful to their wives. And they still chose to do right. That was that generation. My, my grandmothers would pray early in the morning, and they chose godliness, and they chose, they chose to have a pastor, even when their husbands told them not to have a pastor. Um, and then you go on to the next generation. You have Mama Fuller and Papa Fuller. They always had a pastor. They always prayed. Mama, Mama Mary did the right thing in the sight of God, and, and finally Papa followed because of her submission and her leading in, in prayer. And then you go on to my parents and on and on and on. If, if we can continue an atmosphere of no matter what it takes, of no matter what people do to me, I have to be accountable for me. Because Mimma Fuller, Joy knows this. Mimma Fuller would say, yeah, well, what'd you do to them? All growing up, it was never, oh, the parents nowadays, I don't have kids yet, but I do my nieces and nephews this way. They drive me insane. We were always told Keep your spirit right, no matter what they do. A lot of things can be solved if we'll, keep, if we'll be accountable for our actions. And people get aggravated because us as a pastoral team hold them accountable. Accountability feels like an attack when you're not ready to acknowledge that your behavior harms others. You're not grown until you know how to communicate, apologize, be truthful, accept accountability without blaming someone else. So-and-so did this to me, so-and-so did that to me, and so-and-so, but it don't matter about so-and-so. What are you doing? A culture. Now, listen, this is from one of the biggest businessmen in our times, all right? Henry Evans, whoever he is. But this is not even spiritual, but this word accountability is not just used in the church, okay? This is a culture of accountability makes a good organization great and a great organization unstoppable. This is why we are trying our best to get accountability. Accountability brings transparency. Transparency brings intimacy. And you know what intimacy does? Guess what it does? Here, I just put it on the ministry group text. People think that intimacy is about sex. But intimacy is about truth. When you realize you can tell someone your truth... When you can show yourself to them, when you stand in front of them, and their response is, you're safe with me, that's intimacy. That's why some people struggle, because they don't trust anybody. But that is not godly. It's not accountable. It's, you have to still be accountable. Amen. That's good. I want you to listen to this. And this is in the first book of Genesis, the beginning. Listen to this. Genesis 4 and 3 said, In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought up fruit of the ground and offering to the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect to Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his counsel fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy counsel fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Mm. And unto thee shall the desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel 
his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? How important is this in this story? When he said, Where is thy brother? And this is what Cain says. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, we are. Come on. Let me ask you a question. Look around. Is there anybody you want to see go to hell that's here tonight? We are our brother's keeper. We're trying to help one another be better in every area of our life. Come on. How many wants everybody in this church to do good? I want everybody to be blessed. I want everybody to be used of God. I want everybody to prosper. Amen? But the problem, praise God, there is we can't let somebody be a keeper in our life. If Cain would have had the responsibility and realized, praise God, and took ownership of his own self and said, listen, uh, God already told me what to post to bring, and I, I done what I wanted, and, and so I just, you know, uh, he brung the best of his, the fruit of his hand created and done. Amen. God wasn't satisfied with it. And he told him, he said, sin life at the door. Or crouching at the door. It was down, pushing, trying to get his way, amen, in. And he got jealousy. See, that's the problem with the church, praise God. Amen. When we know that we're supposed to love one another fervently. All right, let's go to the book of James, chapter 5. I believe it is. Praise God. Well, we quote it all the time. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Somebody say that. Healed. healed. Do you know that we've got antibodies and we've got all kinds of, uh, of, of things in our body that fights against affections? We should have the same thing in the spiritual realm of the church. Come on, I'm going to tell you something. This is one thing I have to say, praise the Lord, that I believe 100%. I don't care what you believe. Uh, it don't matter what you believe. The Word of God's right. Amen? I, you can embezzle money. You can get away with anything you want to, being a licensed minister, amen, uh, in, in the uh, uh, United Pentecostal Church. But if you mess up with a woman, they'll write you off completely. All right, let's go to the scripture where the Bible says, if you see your brother taken in a fault, ye that are spiritual, go to him in the spirit of what? Meekness. Amen? Go to him in the spirit of meekness. Amen? We ought to be trying to strengthen people, help people, and lift people up. And no, I don't think you ought to put them right back in, praise God, in leadership. And amen, there will be a time they got to take, praise God, amen, sit down and be accountable, praise the Lord, and get some things. But I'm going to tell you something, praise God. They ain't but one imparable uh, sin. What I think, what you think, don't mount to a hill of beans. It's what thus saith the word of the Lord. Because we are our brother's keeper. Come on, I don't care, praise God, how many sins you committed, you've done, or what you've done, praise God. I promise you, the blood of Jesus Christ is able to cleanse from all sins. Amen? All. Oh, that's the same thing, praise God, with us as preachers and our pastors a lot of time. Preachers, praise God, they think they all, we all almighty and Boy, nobody sees, and, you know, we can put them little sins and cover them under the rug. But then we can judge big sins. I'm going to tell you, what did Jesus even say this? Man look upon the, but he said, I look upon the heart. Every sin don't start from the outside. Every sin starts from the heart. And you know what? I want everybody in here, and everybody raised your hand earlier when I said, how many fail God? There ain't none of us that ain't fail God. There's all of them. I've never cut my hair. 
I've never dro- grown a beard. I've never done this. I've never, I'll never put another c- cigarette. No, but let me ask you something. How many spoke evil of your rulers? How many spoke evil of your pastor? The Bible says about not even speak evil of them and, and rule over you. Not to even speak evil of no man. I've learned one thing about preachers, praise God, Brother Joel, in a long time. Because I, I know I used to run with a lot of them, and, 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 and Brother Travis did too. Hey, you go to the, you go to the, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, restaurant after church, you know what you're eating? Other preachers and pastors. Gods, you know. I'm going to tell you something. You know what's going to send us to hell quicker more than anything? What plops inside our mouth? The Bible said you'll be judged for every idle word that's even spoken. Um, how many ever had your parent because you said something you shouldn't say? And I'm not talking about real bad, dirty cussing or anything, but they go, pow, almost under did. <laughs> pop you in the mouth. You ever, how many's ever had their mouth popped? I'm going to tell you something. Hey. Yeah, but you know what? You didn't want to say it no more. How many's ever, how many's ever let something slip out of your mouth, praise God? You, you told somebody something, and you say, oh, my God, I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to tell you something. You know what a murder is? A murder is just not taking a gun and putting it into somebody's head or not taking a knife and stabbing them. A murderer is somebody that when you, you know what? You quoted the other night, and I mean this. What did the Bible say? Six things that God hate, and even seven is abomination. He that soweth discord among the brethren. Let me repeat myself one more time about the anointing. You want to be anointed of God? Look at the picture in the Bible, praise God, in Psalms where it talks about, amen, it was like the precious ointment that come up on the head, even the head of Aaron. Reason it said head first because it, he he had a government established in his life. He was under somebody. Moses, praise the Lord. He had headship. It come to his head first, and then it run down. Didn't say it run down on his face. It run down on his beard. Reason it said beard, praise God, not because it was just saying you could have one. It said, praise God, it run on his beard because it shows a maturity state. If you're not matured in your life, hallelujah, and be becoming to be a man, you'll never be anointed. Then it rose down, went down on his garment, praise God. And the garment represent, praise God, the righteousness. Does anybody and everybody ain't going to be anointed? I'll say it this way. They went but one anointing that was ever given from God. One. Somebody say one. I like to ask a lot of people, where'd you get yours? Because anointing. Flows down. It's scripture. Jesus Christ himself, the son of man, the fleshly side of God, had to always submit to the spirit, the father. He had to reverence, praise God, to the father. Amen. Because the flesh had to be under subjection to the spirit. Even when the flesh cried out and said, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But what did he say? Nevertheless, not my will, the Father yours. Amen. So it's got to be that way. And we gotta be, we gotta learn to be, we gotta learn to be our brother's keeper. And to be our brother's keeper, sometimes we wanna protect them. Watch over them. Come on. I want to see the hands of people really sincerely in this church that say that you pray for every person at TAC daily. Daily. Amen. 
You got to. If you love one another. Come on. Brother David was out for there for a while, sick and things going on. I miss him. Come on. How many miss him? I know a lot of miss him. Because Brother Tim has got to get on there. And he would say some things in our, our men group. Amen. Sister, praise the Lord. Our, if you want to say this, and I'm not saying it in the wrong way, uh, sister. Um, but you are, you are a baby, okay, of a church. Amen. She's grown so much, but she's still the ba- one of the babies of the church. Amen. Sister Whitney. Amen. And God's done so much for her. Amen. And, and I'll be honest with you. But you know what? She wasn't there. I, I, I noticed that. Amen. Mike and Deborah and all of them wasn't there the whole, uh, the, the whole weekend. Brother Tom, every time you miss, don't, I, hey, I always ask him or ask your wife, how's Tom doing? Because I miss you. I love you. Brother Bart, I, I'll be honest with you. I love you, brother, and I send texts out to you, don't I? Hey, brother, miss you. Hope to see you. If you need me, I'm always here. I told him the other day. I texted him. I told him. I said, hey, brother, uh, I want you to come out to the house. We'll just sit around, drink coffee, and talk. Amen. Come on, we need each other. Somebody say we need each other. Come on, the day that you think, praise God, that you can make it without somebody, you're headed for destruction. Brother Joy, uh, uh, getting into this thing, and, and you know, and he's had a good example because he lived with somebody that was a very godly, virtuous woman. She prayed. She was faithful. He's seen in that. And her life reflected, praise God, to it. Man, what she's got's real. And, and, and I know he asked me some things and stuff too, but you know what? You know who he goes to if he's got some problems or something? I guarantee that right there. Because he's got confidence in her. You know what? We ought to learn to be able to have confidence in one another. And when we can get confidence in one another, praise God, that we can be able to let somebody in our life that they can be able to uh, start trying to even correct us when we're wrong. And correction's not a bad thing. Somebody say correction's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Amen? We need correction. Hello. We need correction. Don't get mad when you get it corrected. I mean, when you was third, fourth, fifth grade, and you sat down and you took a test, and the teacher told you, said, you failed. Did you get mad at the teacher or did you get mad at yourself? No, most of the time you got mad at the teacher. It ain't the teacher's fault. Man, it's your fault. Because you need to learn how to put more time in it. Learn. Uh, how many's ever been having to stay over school? Uh, what do they call that? Extra. Huh? I, I, I ain't talking about special ed class now. I'm talking about a class just to help you. And you think, well, they're in trouble. No, they don't. That teacher, you know what? As a pastor, I see things in you that, that you don't see. And I'm saying good things. And you know what? Sometimes sometimes I'm trying to pull it out of you. And you don't like it. Come on. I will say this. And Sister Angina, I would never embarrass her a bit. I love her to death. But I notice. Because of, she's went to other churches, and, and I, listen, I don't like people. Let me say this. I have, if the preacher and the Spirit of God can't draw a person, you've got no business to going to the back to the, uh, the church and grabbing them and, and putting them in a spotlight and dragging them to the altar. And I'm going to say this, praise God, I, I believe it. I, I'm old, I've come from back in Old Star. My God, we, I was under some people, praise God, I'm going to be honest with you. Amen. They be praying for you. They're going to shake something in you or shake something out. But, you, hey, 
I've, I'm listen. I promise you. I've seen people praise God immediately. Praise God when people do that, they just fall out on the floor because they got tired of that people breaking their neck. You know, laying on the floor and they go like this. They go on yep. <laughs> you know what? If you really had the power of God, all you'd have to do is say, "Be gone." Amen. Speak it. But it's honest God truth. It don't hurt. Amen. Come on. Let's try to help. Come on. How many wants to help one another? How many wants to have the better, a, a better church? How many wants to see souls saved? Brother Jeff, would you care for me saying what you said to me? Okay, I'll, I'll say it. I was sitting up there and he texted me. Mm-hmm. On the men's text group right here. Okay. Here's what he said. We was talking about trusting each other and everything. He said, or loving somebody. He said, you can't really love someone until you learn to love yourself. You can't love yourself until you love God. We need to learn to love. Listen, when we get our love, you know the reason we're not seeing miracle signs and wonders? Right. It's not because of our holiness. Because I'm going to tell you something. I used to run with a bunch, praise God. They had holiness down tacked. I mean, down to the T. And then if you crossed them one time, you spilled a drink. If the, if the waitress spilled a drink on them, oh. I'm going to tell you something. Holiness is right. I love holiness. I love separation. But you know what I want more than anything? I want us to be able to bond together and be so knitted and jointly compact, as the Bible said, as a body of believers where we trust each other, where we can work in one mind and one accord. When we come in here, praise God, people can feel the harmony, feel the love, feel the unity, praise God, and they'll say, hey, Yes, I can see that the women are different. I can see that the men are different. I can see that y'all are different. But you know what? I love what I feel. I love, praise God, at the unity and love that is in this place. Amen? And when we learn to do that, I promise you, we'll see more souls saved. You know what people's looking for? Real, genuine Christians. Somebody say real, genuine Christians. All right? That means, praise the Lord, you don't listen. I'm going to tell you something. Your trials and tests and tribulations you're going through, you're, you're, you could be beating a big witness to some people in your family or your workplace. So watch how you handle yourself. Watch how you conduct your life. Amen? Every day. And listen, can I say this? Every one of us, if you make a mistake, what are you supposed to do when you make a mistake? I'm not giving you a license to sin now. But if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, just able to forgive us from our sin. If you make a mistake, you know what? I'm going to say this. I'd like to ask of all the hands of all of the couples that are here tonight, that had a spat before church. There you go. But you know what? You learn. You learn to love each other, forgive each other, and you learn to go on. (laughs) They ain't a perfect marriage in here, is it? Somebody say this, he's still working on me. Amen. Come on. 
Hey, if you think that I'm doing something, you're not going to hurt my feelings to come to me and say, Pastor Horton, man, I'm, I'm kind of, hey, I'll, I'll pray about it and do everything I can right, keep the spirit about it, and if it's wrong and if I feel like I'm doing I, I will change. I want to, come on, I want to make it to heaven. And I'd rather be exposed now and make it. Let me say this again. I'd rather be exposed now and make it right than stand before God. And the Bible said you're going to be naked before him. Ain't nothing going to be hid. And that's going to be the day that I do not want. Nothing in my life because it's going to be too late. Come on. Let's lift our hands. Let's pray for T TAC. Father, we love you today. We thank you for this great body. We thank you for this great assembly. God, for this great church of people, Lord, that makes up, God, Lord, the body of Christ. I thank you for every family. I thank you, Lord, for every individual. My heart's desire to see them prosper, to be in, God, to see them used for the kingdom. I want to see them, God, make it, God, to the pearly gates. I want to, God, want you to speak to them. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. We love you today. Thank you for this great church. Help us to be one another's keeper. Help us, God, to realize that we need accountability in our life. God, that we can have checks and balances in our life, that we can be able, Lord, to help one another in our faults and our failures, Lord. God, not mm, in Jesus' name, I'm asking you, Lord, right now. Let me say this one more thing. Praise God, and I'll give it to Pastor, and he can finish up on it. I'm going to tell you something. And everybody better listen to what I'm going to say. Strong meat. It's a shame when you draw the goal to a family member and spill your guts to a sinner than you do to this church people. What are they ever going to think your church is? Amen. I want to read this again because this is the scripture that we, this is the number one most used scripture when it comes to accountability, but I want to read it if I didn't, if I didn't lose it. Okay, we're going we're gonna to read it again. We've quoted it a thousand times. We're going to read it again because there's revelation in it. Confess your faults one to another. But most, most people quote this scripture and they say, confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. I don't know how many times. I've done it. I've done it hundreds of times, Brother Heath. We leave out the most important part in that whole scripture that says, and pray for one another. Because, Pastor, you said it. Why do you want to go and spill your guts to your family members, to everybody else in the world that doesn't need to hear your problems rather than the church? Some of us, and I'm not saying this as a rebuke, but some of us just have such a big mouth, we'll spill our, spill our guts to everybody. If they're willing to listen, we're, we're willing to talk because we got big mouths. We like to gossip. And you'll confess your faults to anybody but just confessing is not where the healing is. But we have such a problem with our brethren that we will never take the time because what, what was I talking about earlier? Selfishness. We'll spend an hour praying for our needs and our ones before we'll ever pray for the brethren of the church. But back up in the scripture and you'll see how many different times it talks about prayer. James 5, 13, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let, let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him do what? Call for the elders of the church so they can what? Pray over them, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And then it says what? And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And, the, and then the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And then it says confess your faults one to another. And what? Pray for one another. Some of y'all have no issue confessing. You go tell old Holy Joe from Kokomo in the store one day that you've never met in your life all your problems. But when it comes to getting down on your knees and being selfless, not, not selfish, selfless, and saying, God, I have needs today, but 
I'm not going to worry about my needs. I'm going to pray for somebody else. Because I've, you've heard me say it so many different times. The book of Job. Job lost everything. And he was a man, the Bible called perfect, one who eschewed uh, evil, one who he put God first and God bragged on him in everything. But God allowed Satan to take his children, to take his home, to take his livestock, his means of survival. And then all of a sudden his friends come along and for 30-something chapters in Job, they falsely accuse him saying, well, what did you do wrong to deserve all this? You must be a big fat sinner. And still through all of this, Job just sat there and listened to his friends falsely accuse him and never once got out of the way. But at the end of that, God said, you know how I'm going to allow you to receive double of what you had to start with? And he was the richest man in the land. He said, I'm going to make you pray for those who just talked about you. I'm going to make you pray for those who just ridiculed you for the whole book of Job almost. But we want to come in here and we want to pout because somebody just looked at us the wrong way and we assumed that they were talking about us. They didn't sit by us at the restaurant, so we wouldn't take three months to get over ourselves because we're tripping over ourselves because we're offended. God forbid. How about you take time and say, I'm going to pray for that person. I'm going to pray for my pastor instead of running them down at the dessert table. Amen, because it's not just about confessing. Confessing is the easiest part. But then humbling yourself enough to say, I'm going to pray for them. I love them enough. Hey, I want a baby. It's been 12 years my wife and I have been trying. But guess what? We ain't the only ones. Sister Alice, I want you to have a baby. Absolutely. And by George, it's not going to hurt my feelings if, if you get pregnant and have a baby before we do. Amen. Amen. And I hope it happens. In Jesus' name. Sister Melissa's not here tonight. Amen. She's working, but she needs a baby. She wants a baby. Lord, give her a baby. I don't care if, I, if mine comes before or after hers. I, Lord, you can give it to her. You can give it to me. You can give it to Alice. You get it. Open the barren wounds, Jesus. Amen. We need to pray. Prefer your brother. Amen. Prefer. Amen. Take the time to get your eyes off yourself. Amen. Put your selfish pride aside and start praying for others and that's where healing comes from pray for one another that ye may be healed if you've been having issues with addictions issues with perversion issues with pride i guarantee you you start praying for others and just say lord i'm not going to pray for a single need i have i'm going to take just a week commit commit a week to just pray for others. Yes, you need to repent. Make sure you're right with God. But other than that, don't pray for what you want. Pray for what you need. Pray for the needs of others. Pray for your brothers and your sisters. And I'm telling you, you're going to see a 180 degree turn in your life. And things are going to change for you. And I know it's three teal. But surrender, okay? Another uh, thing of submission is surrender. To yield to the power, control, or possession of another upon compulsion or demand, surrender, surrender to the fort, to give up completely or agree, whatever. Okay, so when we surrender to God, we're no longer our own. We're bought with a price. We become his. Okay? People who struggle with trust and people who struggle with accountability do not really have confidence that they're his. Because if you really know who your daddy is, you know daddy's going to take care of you. Right. And while we're on the subject of daddy... Growing up, my dad, y'all know my dad, my dad could look at us and he'd be like, you're not doing it. Or he would sometimes would be like, Ashley and Katie would be little and he would scream and the whole house would vibrate. He'd be like, get away. He'd be like, what are you, what, what's wrong with dad? But we didn't know. There was a snake. There was a hot stove. There was going to fall. I told you not to do that again because daddy loves us. Some of you have a trust issue because you haven't surrendered to God. And therefore, you don't even trust the pastoral team. You don't trust God himself. When you are constantly offended by other people, you don't know who you, who you are in God. Because if you have confidence, you're his. You know, all right, God, you're going to take care of this. I give it to you. That's called surrender. That's called submission. 
Now, here's the second point. And it's really sad because when you really surrender to God and he is your daddy, there's no love like it. And sometimes the nose can be rough. Sometimes the 12 years of barrenness can be, I don't understand it. When people come to me and they say, I've been offended at this person, this person, this person. I just don't know how to get over these offenses. You know what I tell them? You know the number one thing that's, that's helped me get over offenses with people is how can you be offended at your brother who is fleshly? What about me? There's nobody stopping me from having a baby. We, we've tried everything. God himself, Bishop White told me, it'll happen in God's timing. Him himself. The Bible says that Hannah, that God shut her womb up. If you're going to be offended at somebody, what about God? But no, we don't want to, we can't put the blame on God. The real issue is some of the people are offended at God. And you need to surrender. You need to come under that. You need to say, God, I surrender. Because what does this surrender say? To yield to the power, control, and possession of another. Because let's be honest. If you don't surrender here one day, the Bible says in the last days, it says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So when he comes back and he's going to say, depart from me. And I didn't say that. It's in the word. So if you don't surrender to that word and submit to that word, your feelings, your thoughts, and become accountable for those things. He's going to say, depart from me. No offense is worth hell. No sin is worth hell. No weight is worth hell. You hear me? No disappointment is worth hell. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely offended. I lost my daddy 27 years ago. My poor old mama, why didn't the Lord, when she had the Holy Ghost nine years old, why, 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 why did God let her have to die an awful death of cruelty of uh, Alzheimer's? Right. You know what I said one day? i never forget. Very next morning after we come home, we're still living at Daylight Road. And i never forget. I got up. I said, God, I don't understand. You took my daddy, was a good man, never mistreated me, hard worker, sung at church, was a head trustee. You took him and left that stinking drunk on the street? And I stopped and said, oh, my God. Lord, my daddy was ready. That drunk on the street still lost. Yeah. Yeah. There's still a, some more time for him. Come on. Let's lift our hands before we let you go. And let's pray one more time. Father, we love you. We thank you so much. I'm asking you, Lord, to touch God ever the vigil. God, minister to him today. Let us understand that we are blessed beyond measure, Lord. We can always see, God, and look at others that have it worse than us. But I'm asking you, Lord, right now, help me to keep my focus upon you. Help me to love our church, God, and love our ministry team. To love one another fervently, God. Let us understand the revival, the harvest, God, that is waiting ahead for us. Lord, help us not to mess, God. God, the promises, God, that you have promised us. We ask you, Lord, right now to put a covering over this place. Minister to every need that there is, Lord. Take away the fence, Spirit. Take away the hurt and the pain, God. Let us, God, understand, God. Lord, that we want nothing in our heart, God, against no person, God, no matter how mean, God, that they've done us or treated us, Lord. We want to love everybody, God. Lord, and not having enemies, God, because I want to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We love you tonight. In your precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thanks for taking the time to take in today's program. This is a media ministry outreach of Truth Apostolic Church in Madisonville, Kentucky. For more information about our ministry, visit our website. We're doing it. We're
trying our best, praise God, to put it all out, amen, out there on every platform we possibly can. Hallelujah. And I'm glad because the world, hallelujah, amen, needs to know that what I have, amen, is being filled with the Spirit, amen, can change their life. 